So, I'm sitting on the blue couch in the living room at my dad's house. Um, as you could probably assume, I'm pretty tired at this point. I'd actually, I took my laptop charger and I put it on the other side of the room so I had to walk over there and get it so I wouldn't fall asleep. Um, and it, it starts sinking in to me and I'm flipping out, I'm freaking out. We, this is something we've been working on for nearly a year now and our press was going up in four or five hours. It was about to hit the app store. We were actually about to launch this thing. It, it felt kind of surreal. This is something that we'd, we'd worked on for so long and that, well, you know, a funny thing about software is that it's not a nice feedback loop. It's not a nice feedback loop like you have in school where you turn in an assignment and you get a grade, and then you know what your grade is, and it's, you know, you can go check it, and then you do your next assignment. In software, it's a much more fluid feedback loop. The stuff that we were really worried about, the bugs that we were like, oh no, this is gonna screw up the whole thing, we had no idea if anyone would actually even notice those or would actually even care about those. You don't know so much when you're designing a product like this. So, you know, that fall, we'd been, ever, at the end of every week, we thought we'd be done. There were a month, two months, where it was every, every week. It's like, oh, we'll be done at the end of this week. We'll fix all the bugs. And that's just isn't what happened. And it was, it was, really, it was really hard, because it was so demoralizing. But, you know, here, here I was. It was 3 in the morning, sitting on the couch. We've got five hours left. And it was ready. We went through 141 beta test builds. We've iterated so much, and that's something I'm going to talk about more. But, you know, it's something we worked on for over 10 months. And today was the day, well, then was the day where we were launching it. So, you know, we're getting ready. We've got that dramatic email from Apple, you know, you're ready, you're ready for the App Store, what are you going to do, blah, blah, blah. And basically, what is it that we were doing this whole time? Well, me and my friend Michael, Michael, stand up, say hi. Everyone give Michael a round of applause. <laughs> -hoo! Michael's amazing. Um, we were building something called Finish. Good Q-tip, air quotes, that's what's up. Um, so Finish is the to-do list for procrastinators. It was built, I had this idea, I was struggling during finals week, and I felt like there had to be a better way. And there's an interesting thing about that, which I'm gonna talk about more in a minute, but I'd used our school planner, I'd used like tons of different to-do list apps, and something that's really important to me is when you have that feeling of that there has to be a better way, that's really, really valuable, and that's really something to pay attention to, which is what I'm going to talk about. So, this is Finish. After we launched, an interesting thing happened. We got a bunch of articles up that day, which was cool and all, but we still didn't really know. Like, like I said, about that feedback loop, we still didn't really know where we were. Well, that's where we were. We hit the number one spot in the productivity category in the App Store. Apple featured us on the front page. Um, thanks. So we hit the number one spot within about 24 hours after launching. Got a call from Apple. We got featured pretty soon after that. Um, we actually ended up beating Angry Birds one day. Uh, we didn't beat Flappy Bird, because Flappy Bird is like a scourge on the earth. But <laughs> yeah, we beat Angry Birds, which was totally insane. That was fun around school. But basically, finish is the to-do list for procrastinators. We split your stuff into short, mid, and long-term time frames. You add stuff just based on the due date. And then over time, it's all dynamic, it's all fluid, it all slides up. So stuff in midterm moves up to short term a few days later in the background automatically. And that's nice, but the really cool part is that we give you these alerts when your stuff slides. So basically, it's all contextual. So it's like, yo, this thing just went from midterm to short term. You have three days left, you kind of have to care now. And it's all based around your context and around your tasks. <laughs> We've seen really, it's, it's been pretty incredible. So as I said before, I'm going to talk a little bit about iteration. And when you see a product like this, another fun fact about Finish, uh, we actually won the Apple Design Award over the summer, which was totally insane, which I'll talk more about. <laughs> but, you know, with that said and with that perspective, you know, it looks pretty nice, right? Hopefully, maybe. But the funny thing about software, and not only software, anything you build yourself, is that you're iterating, either consciously or unconsciously, to always be improving. So, I've never shown these publicly because they're that bad, but here is the first iteration of Finish. Um, it's, it's not visually pleasing, I guess we could say, but here's the thing. At the time, I thought this was like awesome. Michael's laughing at me right now because he's like, oh no. But at the time, I thought this was like, holy crap, we built this thing and it's so pretty and it's, it's gonna work great and like, 
woohoo. And I, I sent this around to some friends, some designer folks I found on Twitter, and I sent it to some people, and I'm still surprised they responded because I didn't even know how to write a short email back then. But it was basically like, okay, kid, um, mm hmm, all right, let's hit me when you have something you know, that doesn't suck. Um, <laughs> but basically, we really took that in stride, and we really kept iterating on it. Later that spring, this was, so this was two years ago because I came up with it 10th grade finals week. Later that spring, we started, started getting a little closer to what it ended up with, slowly iterating on it. This, this is Finish 1.0. This is what we launched with. Um, as you can see, it's got the time frames. It's got that whole concept. This is what brought us to the top of the app store. This is what really started it all. But even now, looking back, we've iterated more. In August, we launched this big 2.0. We really had been listening to our users, added a lot of our most requested features. That's pretty snazzy. And then, you know, a few months ago, we redesigned for iOS 7. That's finished. That whole iteration pathway was nothing we could have predicted at the beginning. It's not something where we're like, oh, well, this is, you know, the first thing is going to suck, and then in a few months we'll have something that sucks a little less, and then eventually we'll have something that's great. You never have that kind of foresight. And if you do, let me, I want to talk to you, because that's insane. Um, but so about the whole, like, when you have something that you feel like there has to be a better way. That's something that I've learned to feel really, really strongly about. It's something I didn't really get at first. I'm like, OK, well, that's, that's nice. Better ways are generally a good thing. But you know, through this process of doing finish and learning about this, a funny thing happens, and you come to this interesting realization at some point. When you think about problems themselves, and you think about how, and you think about how people think about problems. That sounds weird, but go with it. So when you have a problem yourself that you deal with you know, every day, every week, that bothers you in the shower that night, that gives you a really, really unique value proposition on that problem. You know a lot of things that even if they don't seem that special to you, most people don't know. You know, the fact that it's a problem that actually is a real thing that exists, you know how bad it really is to experience that, and you have that passion behind your frustration on that problem, and you also are forced to think about it. It's really hard to solve a problem you don't have. Both, I mean, you can, that's what big companies do, but it's not fun. You, don't, you can't put your own innate passion into it like you can when you're building your own solution to something. So going off of that, as I said, Finish ended up winning the Apple Design Award in June, which was crazy. And then basically, what, something I really want to emphasize here is that along with solving your own problems, there's nothing that like, made me or me and Michael like the people to do this thing. Now we're, yeah, we're the app kids. But you know, there's nothing inherent about us that let us do that. I mean, I don't have famous computer scientist parents. We're both middle class white kids from Colorado. They're, now what? Um, there's nothing that made us the ones to do this other than the fact that we had this problem ourselves. And you know, we had that booth up there. And as we've been talking to you guys, encouragingly, a lot of you have that problem too. Um, but it's really, really interesting to me because there is nothing special that let us be the ones to solve this. It's really in the fact that this was a problem we had ourselves and that we dealt with. And what I really, really want to emphasize is that the value of the problems you face every day, if you look at them as, well, so there's a guy named Paul Graham who's kind of a legend in the startup world. And one of the things he said is that you don't think up startup ideas, you notice them. And that really stuck with me. I read it in one of his essays a little while ago. And I think that's really interesting because I really think it gets to the heart of this in that the stuff that sucks for you, that bothers you in the shower, that you're like, oh, this, I, like, there has to be a better way to do this, there, one, there probably does, because otherwise you wouldn't be grumbly about it. Two, if there was, you're either not very good at finding it, which is fine, or it just isn't there. And you'd be amazed how often it just isn't there. And then you kind of have this gap, which I guess you could graph out in some cool way. But you have this gap where it's, I have this thing that bothers me all the time. I don't care if it's in art. I don't care if it's in music, in sidewalk chalk, in anything. You have this gap where you're like, I know there needs to be a better way. There's got to be something that should be done about this. 
And it's thinking about that differently. It's looking at that as because I have all this extra insight into this problem that doesn't feel very special. It just feels like it sucks. But that's incredibly valuable. I know so many things about this problem, like I talked about earlier. And then you're put in a really special place to solve that. And that's something that I really, really, like, I don't know if I didn't used to really get that. And I think, you know, beyond what we've learned from our users and what we've learned on the product side, I mean, we've had half a million tasks completed. We've had the app's been opened over a million times. In fact, today, um, as of like 20 minutes ago, we launched the free version of Finish. It's on the App Store now. It's something we've been working on for a while. We're pretty excited about it. Check your favorite tech blog. Um, it's up there. But so you know, we've learned so much through this. And one of the most important things that I really feel deeply is abstracted from all that. It's not, you know, it's not specifically about finish. It's about that having a problem like we did and like we you know, worked to solve is just a really, it's like a deep human thing of building your own solution to something. And you know, sometimes your solution's just that. It's something you use. And sometimes it's something you can scale. And that's, I mean, that's what we did, really. And I'm not saying like reinvent the wheel for every single like anything, but I'm just saying like have a, not, not a judgmental perspective, but a, a critical, but positive, a, a just observant, I guess, perspective on the stuff that is not so great for you every day. I mean, one of my initial titles for this talk, which decided not to go with, was like, what you suck at is awesome. And no, that's a not a very good title, but it kind of is what I'm saying. In that <laughs> the, perspe oh, great. the perspective that that lends you is something, just don't discount that. Use that for all it's worth, because it's one of the most valuable advantages you have that you probably don't even think is anything special. The stuff that bugs you every day, like cherish that. That is huge. And I can't wait to see what you guys build. Thanks.